AP Calculus free response. So a brick, a brick is dropped from a building that is 1,362 feet tall. So it's dropped. So let's, let me say that if it's dropped, what you're supposed to take from this is that its initial velocity is zero. It's being dropped. They're also going to provide you with this with one of a couple position functions, and this is one for a free-falling object. And this says the position at, of our object at any given time is negative 16 t times squared plus v o t uh, initial velocity times time plus initial position. So this is initial position. So it asks us to determine the velocity function, uh, the position and velocity. Well, good for us. They they gave us the first piece, didn't they? So first determine the position function. Well, okay, the position function is s of t. The position of our brick at any given time is negative 16 t squared. We have our initial velocity is 0, right? And it says here that that it's dropped from 1,362 feet high, and that's our initial position. So plus that height that it's dropped from, 1,362. If that's true, then they want velocity. Well, velocity, if you remember, and this is actually very good notation to use on the exam, that velocity is the first derivative of position. So I'm going to just use power rule here, and we, I'm going to take this derivative, and we're going to get negative 32t plus 0. So here's the first part done, okay? And I really would, when you're taking this exam, don't leave any doubt for them. Make sure that you draw this thing out. Make sure your writing is, is pretty good. Um, and do what you can to help them find your answers because they are not going to spend a lot of time looking for your answers. So let's be really careful and make sure that our readers can find them. And if you're taking college calculus right now, your professor is no more likely to be willing to, to look over your paper to find your answers than a AP reader is. So second part. So we did the first part. We'll check that off. We did that. <clears throat> We're going to move to the second part. It says determine the average velocity on the interval 1 to, this should be t equals 1 to 2. So we take average velocity. Remember that's f of b minus f of a, right, over b minus a, right? That's our, that's our, our, our mean function, isn't it? Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take f of 2, right? Sure. So we're going to take f of 2 minus f of 1 over 2 minus 1. Again, if this was a multiple choice question, we wouldn't be screwing with this. I, I would seriously, I'd just write this answer down. But if it shows up on a, on a free response, make sure that you're doing a good job here. And remember also this, and I should be more better, should be better about this. It should be S, right? Okay, and this should be S's because we're using that position function, aren't we? So just for some consistency for our reader. And when we do that math, we, it comes out looking something like this, equals like 1,298 minus 1,346 all over. Well, 2 minus 1 is 1, right? And don't get freaked out because it's going to be a negative number. Why should this be a negative number? Why does it make sense that the, the answer here is negative 48? I'm not done with my answer yet, but negative 48. Because you're dropping something, right? So if an object is falling, its velocity is negative. Remember, velocity, unlike speed, has direction, right? Speed is the absolute value of velocity, so something to think about. The next thing I really want to beat over your head is that you've got to use your units. When you're taking these tests, they're going to try to bleed you for every little point they can take. So on the easy stuff, we've got to get our points. Okay, you guys? So I hope you're making some note about that for taking this exam. Let's move on to the next section. It says find the instantaneous velocity when t equals 1 and t equals 2. So it looks like a two-part question, doesn't it? Move down to here. So there's that part of the question. So what I'm going to do here is take, oh, you know what, this is not bad at all, right? Because to find this instantaneous velocity, we're just going to find the first derivative, right? Well, I'm sorry, we're going to use the first derivative. So we're going to find s prime at 1, right? Otherwise known as velocity. Sorry, velocity at 1. And velocity at 1, If all I'm doing is taking this function right here, right? This is our velocity function right here. And I'm going to take this function right here, and I'm going to use that to get us to this answer. 
So negative 32 times 1 is negative 32. So here is negative 32. I need to remember to, I'm begging you, write the unit, right? Because they're going to try to stick you for points. So let's just make sure we're thinking our way through this, okay? And then the second one may ask us for S prime at 2, right? And that would be negative 64, again, feet per second. And if you make sure you get all these little units written in, I'm telling you, it'll make a difference. I tell everybody, at some point, you're only off between getting a 4 and a 5 by 1 point. So you have to make sure that all the points you should be getting, you're getting, right? The last part of our question today it's this evening for me, but okay, is this part right here. So we did this part. We did this part of making sure I did all these things. Einstein said, well, I remember what's written down, and there's some, there really is something to that, that you can look back af after finishing a free response question and say, did I get all the parts done? And if you're checking them off as you're doing them, you're going to have a much better chance, so please. So we need to find out when the brick hits the ground. So all I'm going to do is say that's the position function, right? And the position function, the position of that brick being dropped is negative 16 t squared plus 1362. It's original height, isn't that right? And remember, this is position, but this is height, right? So this is height, and they're asking us a very specific height question. They're saying, when does S of t, when is the height equal zero? And we'll just take this, negative 16 t squared plus 1362, and <clears throat> I was going to try to factor this out, but I think I'm not going to. I think what I'm going to do is just do a little bit of quick algebra. And if you disagree with my algebra, go ahead and do it your way. But this is, I think this is going to work out good. All right? Let's see. All right? And then I'm going to divide by 16, I guess. And I'm going to divide both sides by 16. And I'm going to get t squared is equal to 1362 over 16, and uh, I'm going to, so what am I going to do? I'm just not sure yet. I think I'm going to try this one here. Yeah, that's good. Please remembering this one, that if we have A over the B, and we have the, um, uh, how do you say, the square root of this one? Okay, sorry about that, it's late. Uh, if, if we have this, remember, it means this, doesn't it? This is just... Not beginning algebra, but algebra. Okay, so remember that. And why is that important here? Because this is going to be t equals this square root of 1362 over 4, isn't it? Because I'm going to take the square root here, right? Uh, how come somebody's there is going plus or minus? Not plus or minus in this case, because we know that the time will be a positive number. So I don't have to screw with that stuff. Um, I don't know what this is. I think I put it in my calculator somewhere. Uh, I, I Just to be honest, I put it in my calculator. This is crucial also. If you're going to write this, I'm going to say it's about equal to 9.2 seconds-ish. Right? So try to get your answer as, as good as possible, but also use your approximation sign instead of your equal sign because it does not actually equal 9.2 seconds. Matter of fact, it, no, it's closer to 9.2 than it is to 9.3. All right. Anything else that I wanted to do? Did I get everything done? Did I get everything done here? Yeah. Oh, find the velocity of the brick at impact. So this is really going to suck. So we're going to find velocity at impact. So we know we have a velocity function, don't we? And our velocity function is negative 32t, right? So what are we going to do here? Oh my God, this thing is really going fast. Actually, this is more exciting than I thought. Um, so we're going to take V of square root of 1362 over 4. And look, this is, this is correct right here. I don't want to argue it because I would hate to be wrong, but I can't stress enough to you how important it is to show your calculus. I'm hoping that on this section, if they had a question like this, they're going to give you either easier numbers to deal with or let you use your damn calculator. Um, but it, if you did this math, it turns out to be actually negative 295.2 to 4-ish, right? 
I'm going to use my units here, feet per second. And that's good. I mean, somebody convert that to miles per hour and, and let me know what that is. But that's smoking. I think that's getting up there. I mean, I wouldn't want to be hit on the head with a brick like that again. So, okay, I hope this was helpful, you guys. You should be studying. Hey, if you find any questions that are like this that you think are good free response questions and you want me to see them, please forward them to me, and I'll be glad to do my best to try to get them done for you guys, okay? Um, good night. Vaya con Dios. Oh, subscribe, please. Comments are welcome.